Hey everyone, I'm Colleen with Awaken Catholic and this is Awaken Saint. It's said that God often chooses weak instruments, that the people he seeks to do great works through are incapable or unqualified. The saints certainly demonstrate this idea. While many of them were accomplished nobles or prolific writers, the kind of people anyone would respect, there are also a great many whose lives seem entirely unremarkable. Today, we celebrate one of these humble lives, Blessed Ulrika Franziska Nisch. Ulrika was born in 1882 in southern Germany. She was the first child of 11, and her parents, far from wealthy, struggled to support her and her siblings. As a result of their limited income, Ulrika had to live with her relatives, separate from much of her family. If this was difficult for Ulrika, she didn't show it. As a child, she was devout and well-behaved. She received her first communion at 13, and then spent a few years obtaining a general education. After this, she started traveling around working as a maid. She went as far as Switzerland to find work and sent money back home to help support her family. When she was in her early 20s, she fell seriously ill. But she was fortunate enough to get help from the Swiss Sisters of the Holy Cross of Ingenball, who nursed her back to health. Grateful for their assistance and inspired by their generosity and holiness, Ulrika decided to enter into religious life. She joined the Holy Cross Sisters in one of their houses closer to her home, and after a few more years, she was able to take her vows. Though she had become a nun, Ulrika's life didn't change a whole lot. She was still a servant, but rather than for the wealthy, she now served the poor and the sick. Most of her time was spent in a kitchen, preparing food for her sisters and for those unable to provide for themselves. Her prior illness was unfortunately a sign of worse to come, and Ulrika suffered greatly in her mid to late 20s. Constant painful headaches made her work difficult, and in 1912 she was struck with tuberculosis. She endured these trials patiently, always focused on her work and thankful to God for her ability to serve. By 1913, her tuberculosis had become severe and she died in May of the same year at only 30 years old. Though she had never sought fame, many people had been touched by her attitude of humble service and the story of her life spread. By the 1960s, her grave had become a popular pilgrimage site visited by hundreds of thousands of people. Ongoing devotion to Ulrika prompted the Archbishop of Freiburg to learn more about her life. This began the process by which Pope John Paul II would eventually pronounce her blessed in 1987. It should go without saying that time and talent are irrelevant in the face of God, but it's easy to forget that. We spend so much of our time each day dedicating ourselves to our families, our jobs, and everything else that matters to us. And while these things are are important, it's equally important to put them in the right context and remember that our faith should be part of all of them. Ulrika's life was short and simple, and yet she served and continues to serve as a holy example to many people because she truly understood whom she was living for. Blessed Ulrika Franciscanish, pray for us.